child. May your death bring about a better world. The world of My Hero Academia is a superhuman society, with over 80% of the population possessing some uncanny ability. But not everyone uses theirs for good. For every hero, there's a villain. But which of these characters are more or less misunderstood, and which villains are truly reprehensible? I'm Kifinosi with Otaku Binge, and this is My Hero Academia Villains, evil to most evil. Today we'll be starting with the villains who are mostly misunderstood and working our way down to the most evil. Starting with the least evil villain, or in this case villains, we have Gentle Criminal and La Brava. Gentle Criminal is a gentlemanly thief who records his crimes while speaking out against the injustices of society. With Gentle's charismatic personality and La Brava's editing and recording skills, the two make quite the dynamic team, both in battle and in entertainment. But while they are criminals, duh, they certainly aren't evil. For one thing, Gentle despises violence. It goes against the fiber of my being using his quirk elasticity only to keep others from foiling his schemes and never intentionally harming others in his crimes. As for La Brava, she doesn't care about anything but sticking close to Gentle and following him through anything. When Deku reminds Gentle of the kind of hero he once wanted to be, he bounces Deku back to UA so he won't let everyone down at the school festival, and then Gentle takes the fall for the crimes to try and keep La Brava out of trouble. With genuine remorse, minimal violence, and the potential for redemption, these two are undeniably the least evil villains in this superpowered society. Let's scope out Lady Nagant next. Currently the newest villain to the series, this assassin is in league with All For One, and as we see in her intense fight with Midoriya, she's one of the world's most skilled long-range fighters. But beneath her seemingly cold nature lies a heart full of genuine conviction. Once an enthusiastic recruit of the Hero Commission, she slowly but surely learned of the constant bloodshed underneath Hero Society. This eventually culminated in her murdering her superior, leading ultimately to her serving All For One. But like Gentle, her fight with Midoriya showed the return of a legitimate desire to see Hero Society repaired rather than destroyed. We guess you could say she has a shot at redemption. This might be controversial, but our bronze medal of least evil goes to Stain. The Hero Killer was the first villain in My Hero who began to show the darker side of Hero Society. With 40 victims total, Stain went around slaughtering any heroes he considered unworthy, basically meaning corrupt or doing it only for the money. He also threatened Ida, fully intending to kill him, but was narrowly defeated by him and his friends. Dubbing Deku as worthy, he actually rescues him from a flying Nomu, but all of this by itself would frankly only be enough to give Stain a lower spot in the bad section rather than a spot in the gray area. Season 6, however, shows a bit of a redemption arc for Stain. He takes sensitive information on All for One and the villains from Tartarus after the prison break, encouraging All Might to use it to give the heroes a chance to make a plan that will take him down. For as much bloodshed as the hero killer Stain has caused, he's also become an ally to the heroes and so far one of the MVPs in the fight against All for One. Let's give a quick mention to the Nomu and Gigantomachia. Destructive tendencies are certainly a danger in a superpowered society. The superhuman corpse is known as the Nomu and the walking force of destruction Gigantomachia Machia are clear examples of this. However, they can't be called evil for one simple reason, their lack of free will. Nomu and Gigantomachia can, or in some cases will, only follow orders from the voice of their masters. Though their deeds may kill many people, they generally don't have a choice in what they do, so we have to place them pretty low. And speaking of Nomu, let's warp over to Kurogiri to round out our gray area. He's Tomura Shigaraki's most loyal confidant, and an invaluable part to many of his villainous attacks, providing portals for a quick escape when needed, and also entrance sometimes. Kurogiri is steadfast in his service to Shigaraki, who desires nothing but destruction. So why is he in the gray area? Well, because, like we suggested earlier, Kurogiri is a Nomu, made from the corpse of Aizawa and present Mike's friend, Shirakumo. When the two try desperately to call out to him, Shirakumo offers a small hint to the sight of the planned war on heroes, and considering that small bit of remaining heroism in his soul, we can at least keep him out of the truly evil section. Moving into said section, we have Himiko Toga. Toga has a passion for romance and a fascination with blood. This deadly combination resulted in her masking her twisted fantasies throughout most of her childhood rather than being provided the therapy she needed. Furthermore, that resulted in her becoming, well, the Himiko Toga we know. She murdered her middle school crush, drinking his blood from a straw with a sickening look of pleasure on her face. Since then, she's been a loyal comrade to the League of Villains, slicing up anyone she finds cute. And that goes double for anyone who dares to get in her way. We'd definitely place Toga higher, but like twice, she suffers from severe mental illnesses, which make her the way she is. Her encounter with Uravity during the post-liberation war arc was a clear illustration that she struggles greatly to accept the fact that people want to kill her because of the way she is. 
Because Toga is the youngest of the villains and one of the most mentally unstable, we have to place her this low out of pity, if nothing else. Because she genuinely doesn't seem to understand that what she's doing is wrong. Next up is Twice. No, it isn't. Jin Twice Bubai Gawara is a prominent member of the League of Villains. He's killed his fair share of people and has no issue helping Shigaraki with his nefarious schemes. Even before his involvement with them, he went on a pretty serious crime spree. Having no friends nor family to his name, Jin connected with clones of himself, leading to constant instability over not knowing whether he's even the real version of himself. Resultantly, he was recruited by Giran to the League of Villains and desires nothing more than to help his newfound family who he values above all else. He's low in our bad territory because, while well, we can't possibly call a League of Villains staple anything less than a villain, yes we can, he deserves credit for his care and loyalty to his friends. When Giran the Villain Broker is captured by Redestro, Twice is more determined than anyone to rescue him, even willing to go against the others' wishes to stay loyal to the friend who led him to his found family. He's also trusting. A bit too trusting, as his friendship with Hawks led him to being ultimately killed for his refusal to surrender and betray his friends. We miss you twice, but we have to give you some bad points for your misdeeds. You're a stand-up guy. You've heard of heroes in a half-shell. Now get ready for the villain in a no-shell. Spinner. A disciple of Stain, Spinner desires to make his will a reality. As a victim of quirk-based discrimination, Spinner's fully aware of the corruptions and injustices that come with superhuman society. Like Twice, he's also fiercely loyal to Shigaraki and the League, wanting to contribute in any way he can. Most of the merits we can say about Twice can also be said about Spinner, but unlike Twice, Spinner isn't suffering from quite as much of an unstable mind, so we're going to give him a very slight upper hand in terms of being evil. We're ready to rumble with our next entry, Kendo Rappa. A secondary antagonist from the Shia Hasaikai arc, you might remember Rappa as the enormous fist fighter who duped it out with Kirishima and Fatgum. Rappa loves nothing more than a good slugfest, finding any fight that involves weapons to be a boring waste of time. To his credit, Rappa only shows interest in people who can give him a good fight, so he isn't just a fan of senseless bloodshed. He also spares Kirishima's life after beating him in their fight so that they can fight again some other time. He even squealed on the big picture of his boss Chisaki's plan, though we aren't sure if he was being friendly or stupid there. He's not averse to killing people, abusing his teammates, nor helping Chisaki with his horrible plans, but at least he has a sense of honor, and we can respect that much. Mr. Compress is one of the more underrated My Hero villains, and one of the most mysterious. This masked magician is another member of the League of Villains who specializes in deception. With the ability to compress objects and even people into marbles with just a touch, Compress made his debut with some good old-fashioned child abduction, kidnapping Bakugo under the command of Shigaraki and nearly kidnapping Tokoyami, nice shot Aoyama, just because he felt like it. Season 6 also revealed that Mr. Compress is, you guessed it, loyal to the League. He manages to compress his own butt to free himself and Spinner from their restraints, getting hospitalized in the process. Compress is your typical bad guy in terms of morality, while he's nowhere near good, the characters beneath him get much worse. If nothing else, he cares about his comrades a lot. Let's go from the League of Villains to the Meta Liberation Army, starting with Curious. True to her name, she's very inquisitive. One might even say she's always pursuing information. With the power to turn anything she touches into an explosive, think Killer Queen from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, she uses her own men as literal suicide bombs to attack Toga, who she wants to learn more about. She's so invested in the potential behind her article that she hardly seems to notice the imminent death she faces as Toga uses Ochako's quirk, via transformation, to make her plummet to her death. Looks like the closest thing she got to a big scoop is being scooped off of the pavement. Ew, why did I say that? Well, I stand by it. We're a bit skeptical of whether or not this is the right place for Tomoyasu Chikazoku. Just kidding, it's perfect, and he definitely correct us if that weren't the case. Yet another trusted staple of the Meta Liberation Army, Skeptic is the intelligence of the organization, and perhaps its most valuable member behind Redestro himself. He's a skilled leader and hacker, using his talents to keep the troops of the army organized and on task. He's also ruthless with his methods, like sabotaging Hawks by successfully editing together a video of him killing twice that makes him look pretty darn villainous. Very Mysterio-esque, I respect that. Don't go thinking he did it out of sadness for twice, though. When those two fought, he used puppets of twice to attack him despite knowing full well of his intense trauma. This ultimately backfired since it led it to twice overcoming his trauma, but still, psychological warfare is a step above even regular warfare. Or below, depends how you're looking at it. Oh yeah, we didn't mention that Skeptic also tried to kill Toga. Nasty guy. But where would he be without Redestro? The steadfast leader of the liberation movement believes that everyone should be able to use their quirks as they see fit. And he really believes it. 
In one scene from the manga, strangely absent from the anime, he murders one of his associates for simply questioning some parts of his book. Redestro is utterly ruthless in his beliefs, which inherently leads to chaos and destruction, as we see in the massive war between his followers and the League of Villains. He has the army in the palm of his hands, loyal enough to follow him even when he names Shigaraki the new leader when they decide to join forces. Still, he can't quite compare to some of the more bloodthirsty villains further down. Dabi is up next, but you can just call him Toya Todoroki. That's right, in a reveal that shocked, well, nobody, honestly, this frequent villain was revealed to be the mysterious eldest Todoroki sibling, Toya. He's a victim of Endeavor's horrendous parenting, perhaps even more so than Shoto. Being simultaneously trained to become an incredible hero and developing a body that couldn't handle its own intense flames, Toya lost his mind at a young age, leading to him eventually becoming the ruthless serial killer we know and some people love. Like Stain, he's a mass murderer with convictions that run deep. Unlike Stain, however, he doesn't just target heroes. Whether they're heroes, villains, small-time criminals, or even innocents, Dobby has no problem with turning anyone into fuel for his fire. What puts him so much lower than other League of Villains members is his lack of concern for his comrades. He was the least affected by Twice's death, and has gone on record multiple times saying that he only sticks with Shigaraki to further his own goals. Wolfram, the main villain of My Hero Academia 2 Heroes, is up next. Some background, All Might's old friend, David Shield, began to work on an invention called the Quirk Amplification Device. When he was pressured to stop development on it, his assistant Samuel suggested hiring fake villains to attack the Eye Island Expo to retrieve it. This was not altruism on Samuel's part, however. It was meant to regain the invention and the glory that came with it. But this is where the very not fake villain Wolfram comes in. He double-crossed Sam, intending to kill him, and he would have succeeded had David not jumped in to take the bullet for him. His plan was centered around money. After retrieving the quirk amplification device, he planned to keep David captive and force him to make more so that he could sell them for a profit. Wolfram was absolutely ruthless, and despite his brutish nature, honestly had a pretty darn brilliant plan. He's one of those villains who's only this low on the list because the following characters are worse. At last, we've reached the main antagonist of the series, Tomura Shigaraki. We're just as surprised as you that Shigaraki isn't higher on our list. Out of all the characters on this list, he's caused at least close to the most destruction, and certainly takes the most pleasure in it. Nothing gives Shigaraki's life purpose like destroying the society that shunned him when he needed support the most. As a child, having accidentally killed his entire family as his decay quirk manifested, All For One took a vulnerable Tenko Shimura in, grooming him into the destruction-loving villain he is today. Since then, he's become an exponential danger, managing to use his troops to double-cross the Shia Hasaikai and take their quirk-destroying bullets, destroying an entire city during his fight with Redestro, and let's not forget his massive fight with the heroes in the post-liberation war, resulting in countless casualties, not one of which he feels bad for. Shigaraki is a monster, there's no doubt about that, but we have to place him below the remaining characters because, as evil as he is, we still feel pity for him. Had he been taken in by someone other than All For One, he could have turned out differently, maybe he even could have become a hero. But the fact remains that he is who he is, and while we can sympathize with him and we can't rank him as any more evil, we can't possibly deny how evil he is. At least Shigaraki cares about his comrades, though. That is something. We wish we could have put Nine at number nine on this list, but he's just too darn evil to be kept that low. The main villain of the second movie, Heroes Rising, Nine's plot involved stealing an ideal combination of quirks to help build a society where one's social status revolves solely around how strong their quirk is. Nine, if nothing else, does genuinely care for his friends and really does want them to be free from the quirk-based discrimination they face, but that doesn't excuse how ruthless his plan is as a whole. He's willing to steal the quirk of Katsuma Shimano, a literal child, to fulfill his plan. Worse still, he even threatens to kill his sister, again, a literal child, if he doesn't comply. It's hard to get much worse than a direct threat to murder a child. There are also the countless other lives he's taken and the crimes he's committed. Nine is a menace and a monster, but at least he has some good intentions. Look, we've really got to split hairs with these guys. They're all pretty nasty. Muscular might not be a character you'd expect to be this high on the list, given that he's one of the more minor villains on the list. Really, he's only notable for being the first villain Midoriya had properly fought. But Muscular is one of the most purely evil characters in the world of My Hero, and pretty much embodies the clearest danger of superpowered society. Muscular has absolutely no goals, convictions, nor anything of the sort. He's nothing more than a brute who thrives off of bloodshed. This might sound similar to Rappa, but Muscular isn't looking for a good fight. He's looking for someone to treat as a ragdoll until he ultimately kills them. It doesn't matter if they're heroes like the Water Hose duo, nor even their toddler son Kota. Muscular is a merciless, remorseless killer. It's hard to believe that there are still four more characters above him. 
And it's even harder to believe that Overhaul, aka Kai Chisaki, isn't even in the top three. At the time of his debut, Chisaki was the most startlingly dark villain the series had seen. With the intent to wipe out quirks from the world, he concocted a serum that would destroy them without bringing any other harm to the person, viewing quirks as the root of all society's issues. However well-intentioned this may sound, it's totally rendered moot by two factors. First of all, one of the ingredients of these bullets is the blood cells of Eri, the granddaughter of his boss, who took him in off the street, mind you. Overhaul cuts her up constantly to get what he needs and then uses his quirk to restore her so that she never runs out. He also verbally abuses her, showing no sympathy for how he tortures her, and then even gaslights her into nearly surrendering to him while Deku and Lemillion fight against him. The second issue is that it's later revealed that Overhaul's been developing a serum to restore quirks. This confirms that he doesn't care about fixing any societal issues, he just wants to monopolize quirks to put the Yakuza back on top. This goes directly against his boss's wishes, and when he disapproves, Overhaul comatizes him, planning to heal him only when his plans are fulfilled. Sadly, this won't come to pass, since Chigaraki cuts off his hands after he's arrested. The one redeeming factor we can say about Overhaul is that, if nothing else, he does feel bad for hurting his boss, showing desperation to find a way to heal him when he teams up with Lady Nagant. But not only is this the bare minimum, he's not at all remorseful for his treatment of Ares, so we won't really give him any slack. Not every doctor is good. Take it from Dr. Garaki, our bronze medalist of evil. All for one's trusted companion and servant, Dr. Garaki is responsible for the brain-dead corpses of destruction known as Nomu. He has no problem turning people, be they dead or simply weak and vulnerable, into mindless monsters. His steadfast loyalty to All for One is no doubt a strike against him. With the ability to duplicate quirks, he's one of the most valuable assets to the world's most dangerous man, and we'd argue that he deserves at least some of the responsibility for all of his deeds as a result. So really? His crimes against humanity are just the cherry on top. The one good thing we can say about Garaki is that at least he has some twisted love for his creations? Rip Johnny. Now let's turn to the last movie villain, Flex Turn. The guy with what may be the most tongue-in-cheek villain name we've ever seen. Flex Turn has the power to deflect any damage inflicted on him back to the dealer. Unfortunately, this resulted in him accidentally hurting anyone who tried to be close to him, leading him to ostracization and a deep hatred of quirks. His solution? To eradicate all quirks, but with a method that makes Overhaul's plan look tame by comparison. By using trigger bombs, he plans to overdose the entire world with a serum that greatly increases quirk potency to the extent that people's bodies could not control them and then they'd be brutally destroyed. He's one of the most intense villains by nature, and he isn't above holding the families of brilliant scientists hostage to make said bombs. Even if we could argue that he does care about quirkless people, his willingness to eradicate 80% of the world's population in an extremely brutal way, no less, makes that null and void. It's difficult to get much worse than a proponent of cruel and unusual genocide, but... While we really wish we could have made our top pick less predictable, All For One is one of those characters who just doesn't really leave much room for debate in a discussion of evilness. With the power to take and distribute quirks as he sees fit, All For One uses this incredible ability to solve the problems of many, whether it's giving someone the quirk they need to become a hero, or taking away one that debilitates their life. As altruistic as this may sound, he only does it to keep these quirks in his back pocket as assets. The most notable example of this is Shigaraki, of course, who he took in and turned from a deeply wounded child into the absolute monster he is today. Later on, he even betrays Shigaraki, more or less taking over his body once he deems it an ideal vessel. If anyone else on this list is ruthless, All For One amps that up to 11, and he has the intellect, powers, and connections to enact all his awful plans. He's the devil incarnate, and while we won't give any manga spoilers, we promise you'll only have more reasons to hate him later on. What a surprise, right? Just know that there's no doubt that All For One deserves the gold medal of evil.